does it feel to be back? You heard the crowd out there and everything. I mean, what's this kind of emotions and everything for you right now? Uh, it, it feels good, you know. Um, it's something I definitely miss. And just being out of sport for so long and, you know, not having this, you know, I, I definitely miss this part of it, you know. At one point, I would get so tired of this and be like, oh man, I gotta do this. But being away from it, I see the beauty of it now and I can appreciate it a lot more. Do you embrace this a little more? I mean, this this chance, I mean, you're not only are you back, but you're still viable, yeah. you're still a contender. So what does that mean at this stage? Um, it means a lot. It means a lot to be able to come back uh, after two years of being off and then still, you know, be in the top, you know, with, with the top guys and being able to compete against top guys. Um, so, I mean, I'm just happy to be able to go out there and compete again and uh, go out there and show the world what I can do. You know, um, you know, early this year, I didn't know what my fate was going to be when I had to have my second knee surgery. And uh, I hope that I'll be able to make a return by the fall. And I stayed on my therapy and, and I made it, you know, so I'm just happy to have a chance to go out there and compete again. You beat the odds already. Then. Yeah, I definitely beat the odds. And, you know, um, for a while I gave up and, and um, you know, I started getting down on myself and put on a bit of weight and I started feeling sorry for myself and I was like you know what man I, uh, I can't go out like this you know if, if my story is going to end it's going to end at least the way I want it to and, and I want to go out there and at least compete you know and I, I just couldn't go out like that. Sean when guys have accomplished what you've accomplished you know sometimes they get to a point in their career where they say well I'm just taking it one fight at a time I'm trying to figure out you know knowing saying what you're saying now it sounds like you're a little bit rejuvenated but what does the future look like is it one fight at a time or do you see things going further? Um, you know, it is, I definitely want to see it go further, you know, but uh, I think I think the one fight at a time is definitely a great approach because when you when you focus on one fight at a time, you know, you learn to appreciate that one fight. I think that sometimes we have a tendency to kind of put so much things on our plate and really not be able to appreciate what we have in front of us. And for me, uh, I'm satisfied with just this one fight at a time and going out there and compete as hard as I can for this one fight. You know, I'm not uh, trying to retire anytime soon, but I think just having a grateful attitude of being able to go out there and appreciate competing one time, at, one fight at a time is, is the right approach for me. There was some thought that maybe this might be, you know, have title shot implications. Then the news came out that John Jones won't have jail time. You yeah. know, he might be reinstated. I kind of think he's going to be next. Did that take any wind out of the sails or, or affect your uh, thoughts on this at all, knowing that now he's back in the mix? Um, you know, I, I kind of knew that he'll always be back in the mix. I kind of felt like, um, you know, everybody was talking about title shot implications and things like that. And I kind of knew that, you know, uh, Jones would come back. And uh, so I, I, didn't, I didn't really get in my head that this is going to be the one that got me the title shot. I was just, you know, thankful for whatever came my way. If it, if it happens that he wasn't ready and I got a chance to fight for a title, that'd be great. But, um, you know, for me, it's all about just this one fight, just getting this one fight out the way, uh, you know, knocking out some ring rust, going out there and enjoying myself through the whole process and just getting this one fight back in uh, in the UFC. Considering you have been gone for so long, the question of ring rust is always going to arise, but have you been taking any kind of special precautions or training in any special way to make sure that you that you don't feel any of that rust from a two-year layoff? You know, there's really no way you can uh, train against ring rust. It's just something that happens, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's more or less about your mindset than anything. I, I think what ring rust what comes into is just, you know, uh, doubt and frustration. When, when you when you, when you go out there and you're, and you're punching not, you know, your timing may be a little bit off or you may feel, uh, you know, that you're not as sharp as you used to be. Then you start getting in your own head and then you start giving way to frustration and uh, just fear more than anything. But, um, you know, I, I'm willing to embrace whatever comes. You know, I, I know that I've been out for two years and, and for me to be, you know, have such high standards and be like, I'm not gonna make a mistake, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna go out there and just fight and just see what happens. Will I have ring rust? Most likely, but for the most part, uh, I'm willing to ride, ride through whatever happens. All right, so you're facing, you know, Ryan Bader, four, who's on a four win, uh, win streak. Uh, looking at his style against yours, what, where do you think he possesses the biggest problems or dangers? Um, you know, Ryan Bader has a lot of power in his hands, you know, and, uh, you know, he, he has, he, he has, uh, he's kind of sneaky fast, meaning the fact that, you, you wouldn't expect him to be as fast as he is because he, he kind of explodes off his punches a lot, which has been, uh, you know, his biggest uh, strength, but also his weaknesses. Sometimes he tries to explode into things and he gets caught in, in, in punches uh, with Machida and, and with Boba Teixeira. So, you know, his power is definitely an issue, but he also has a wrestling too. And, and um, you know, he's, he's a strong physical guy. And now he's fighting smarter. You know, he's fighting, he's starting to seem to understand the fight game a little bit more. So he's definitely a dangerous opponent, but uh, who isn't at this point? And if we look at the two gentlemen behind you, Cormier and Gustafsson, who do you have picked as a winner of that fight and why? <laughs>
I'm going with my man DC here. Uh, I got to go with DC. I think that, you know, his, his competitive edge and, and his ability to make people fight his fight is going to get him the edge. You know, I think that, uh, you know, DC fights at his pace and he does a really good job of bringing people into his pace. There's really only one time he's been brought out of his pace, and that's with John Jones. And uh, early on, he had his opportunities in that fight, but, you know, he just didn't, didn't follow through with it. But I think uh, he's definitely learned lessons from that, and I think he's learned how to make people fight in his zone, and I think he's going to do the same thing against Gustafson. How does Rashad the analyst assess Rashad the fighter at this point? Uh, well, Rashad the analyst, it's kind of hard because there's a lot of bias. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I was to be fair about it, you know, I would say, uh, you know, you, you have a fighter who's been out for two years, and anytime you have a fighter who's going up for two years, you know, there, there's a considerable amount of doubt and a considerable amount of, um, you know, of newness to it, no matter how many fights he's had. But, um, you know, it, it's just, you know, will he be able to keep up with with, with uh, the ever-progressing MMA game, you know what I'm saying? And not having that contact for two years, you know, how will that play into him when it comes time to the fight time? Uh, so it, it's, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be difficult for me. I, I do have my work cut off for me, but at the same time, you know, um, I, I got in this game to compete at the highest level against the highest people, and, and part of that is just competing against myself, you know? And, and, and you know, before I face anybody in the octagon, it's all about here, starting here. And for me, I have to get over all of the mental hurdles that I have and go out there and perform my, my, my best. We talked last week real quick about just you talking with Dominic and relying on him a little bit, yeah. going through the same thing. How much does seeing his comeback, 61 seconds, give you that, okay, I, I can do this too? It, it gave me a lot of confidence. You know, Dominic is one of those guys who's just, uh, you know, when, when it comes to training, when it comes to rehab, he's on top of it. And, uh, you know, asking him, you know, picking his brain about, you know, what he thinks about this and about that has definitely gave me a lot of confidence. It definitely helped me out a lot get back on the right path. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.